If you're getting ready to homeschool a high schooler, you are not going to want to miss this because I have my son Drew with me today. And he has completed two years of high school, ninth grade and 10th grade. And we're going to talk all about curriculum and all the things that he loved and all the things he hated. So stay tuned. So my name is Rachel and we have been homeschooling since this one was in third grade and you wanted to be homeschooled, didn't you, bud? Yeah. Why? Because uh, all of my cousins are homeschooled. <laughs> Peer pressure. He wanted to be like the crowd. <laughs> it's like, be like the crowd in reverse. All right, and you've never wanted to go back to school either, have you? No. Because I have asked him every year, hey, do you want to like think about going to the Christian school so you could play basketball or do all the other things and the benefits of homeschooling outweigh the benefits of sports for you, right? Okay, so first I, I'm kind of just going to ask Drew questions and then we're going to get his opinion because one of the things about homeschooling high school as a mom is you are a lot less involved in their day-to-day -day curriculum, their day-to-day -day homework because they're working more independently. So Drew really knows, he's really the expert on these high school curriculums <laughs> way more than me. I help pick him out, although I give you a lot of choices. Do you think I give you choices? Yeah. Okay. This year especially, because when we pick out a science, I'm going to like say, here's the three I think you'll like, and then I'm going to make him choose which curriculum he's going to do. We haven't made that decision yet. A lot of times we start school 8.30, 9 o'clock, and we do it together. We do Bible study together. What point in the day do you think you're done doing your high school work? What ty time of the day do you usually quit? Like 6. Really? 6 yeah. o'clock? <laughs> Oh my goodness, I had no idea. But you take a decent sized lunch, right? No. Really? Oh man, your mama is that much of a taskmaster? <laughs> you just got a lot of work to do, right? Yeah. All right, so we're, we'll talk about that with the curriculum, <laughs> how long the curriculum does. I've probably given him too much to do in a year. That's why next year is gonna be a lot lighter. <laughs> Plus he worked this year. If you work on Friday, how do you adjust your schoolwork? Do you work on, do you do work on Saturdays? Do you do school Friday afternoon? Do you do it on Sunday or do you just pick it back up on Monday? We don't plan anything on Friday. Unless I have work that I'll do like projects or studying for something. Then you might do that Friday afternoon or yeah. night. Yeah. Listen, if at any point in this video you have a spe more specific question about curriculum, because we're going to get ready to talk about that, if there's something that you're still curious about that we didn't address, or even if you have a general question about high school, you know, if there's enough questions, maybe Drew and I should do a high school Q&A. Would you do another video with me? Sure. <laughs> Answering all of your high school questions. Okay, let's talk about Shorman math, your favorite subject. <laughs> he said math was his least favorite subject, just so you know. Okay, so the first thing that I want you to know about Shorman math, because I, I liked it because you had the potential to complete three credits in two years. But you should know that both the Algebra 1 geometry and the Algebra 2 geometry, the subscription lasts for two years. So you don't have to complete it in a year. Did you know that, Drew? Yeah. Oh. It has a timer on the website. Oh, it does? Yeah. Okay, so it has a timer on the website to let you know when your subscription's running out? Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't know that, but he he's always trying to get it done in a year. So what do you think the pros and the cons? So let's talk about what did you, what do you think is nice about Shorman's website or the curriculum? Is there anything you like about it? The video helps a lot uh, and it's a lot better than just reading everything off the textbook. Uh, when you're doing the daily work and you don't know how to solve the problem exactly, there's links. There's links uh, 
on the question that'll give you help so you don't have to like turn back and find the lesson that you learned okay it on that's nice so it's easier to get help okay are the um, tests and quizzes timed the quizzes and the exams are timed but it's super long timer it okay so that's not really a factor for you no okay what do you think are the cons that's the negative things about Shor what do you not like about Shorman math or is it just you don't like math <laughs> I think it's just he doesn't care for math <laughs> in general right yeah it's just not your favorite subject I will say this when he did algebra 1 his freshman year we knew right away it was more advanced math it's probably more of an accelerated pace if you actually do a lesson a week don't you think it goes pretty fast and teaching you a lot on well how long does it take you to do a lesson though well, a day it's like an hour and a half to do a lesson but on the website if you follow it it only has you do like two or three lessons a week hmm. and then it'll be a 30-week course at the end and the answers on the quizzes and the tests and in the the homework too it's multiple choice right well there's some that are multiple choice and there's some that you have to enter um, the exact answer there's some that you can get partial credit for on all of them if you get it wrong the first time, you have four tries, but each time you miss, you get less credit for the uh, question. Yeah. And my niece is also using Shorman Math, and my sister-in-law was telling me she didn't care for the partial credit. I know there's probably, that's probably a preference thing, whether or not you think your, the child should get partial credit or not. But she thought it made the grade deceiving. So you could, if you got a lot of partial credit, your grade would be higher, but maybe you were just guessing. Can you guess and get partial credit? Is the partial credit stuff on multiple choice? Or is that where you have to enter the numbers? It's, um, it's on all of them. The only reason I'm bringing it up is because both my sister-in-law and I have come to the realization this math course is really accelerated. And so our lesson learned is to slow it down. There came a point this year with Algebra 2 and Geometry where you were kind of going downhill, right? Your understanding. Somewhere along the, w the way, a block, a foundational block, did not get built. So this is the nice thing about Shorman because the subscription's long. I'm going to email them and ask them to reset. I'm gonna, I've got to look and see where it started to go downhill and we're just gonna reset it and we're gonna do that um, again next year. So maybe he'll do one more semester, which will be good reinforcement for him repeating the things that maybe he didn't grasp as well. And you can decide as a homeschool mom if you want to keep repeating it till mastery to your kid gets an A or a B or you know if they're not college bound maybe it doesn't really matter to you but that's for you to decide but Shorman will let you reset some things we did it early on because you accidentally were putting in when we were learning how to use the website he was accidentally putting in the wrong things and so then it was messing up his grade and I had to um, have them switch it back I don't know if they did or not, or if I just switched it in my own brain and decided, you know what, I'll just correct that when I write your transcript. Can you add another benefit? Okay, one more benefit. It shows you next to your grade, it also shows the average grade of other people. Oh, so you know if this was hard for everybody. Yeah. That's nice. So did that make you feel better? <laughs> no. Oh no, so there must be a lot of math geniuses using this. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, don't compare yourself. You're not going to be, uh, we're not sure what you're going to be yet. <laughs> okay, how does grading work? So Shorman Math is just like teaching textbooks in that it teaches and it grades and keeps the grades for you. 
Um, I can't remember what the percentages is, but it, it gives as part of your grade the homework, which I just attended a homeschool conference, and one of the things that they said for high school is, why are we giving grades for homework? Homework should be if you completed it, but not whether or not you got it right, because in the homework time, you're practicing it. You're trying to figure it out and practice whether or not you got right. And I thought that was a really good point, because that's how we do Latin. He doesn't get a grade for his homework, he just gets participation grade. And only gets grades on the tests and quizzes, which is really where you're seeing how well you know it. So I will have to readjust his grade in that way and um, give him a different math grade than what the website says. But if you want to grade the homework, I mean, they will give you a grade and you don't have to do anything and you don't have to teach your kids math because Dr. Shorman does it. All right. Language Arts, Progeny Press Literature Guides. What did you think? The Uncle Tom's Cabin Literature Guide. How long did that take you on a daily basis? Because I, they suggest those lit guides are only eight weeks, and I stretched it to like 16. And how long was it still taking you? I had to like, there were way too many questions. It was like four pages of straight questions. And they were very hard questions, so I had to go back in the book and find the answers. So I had to read everything basically twice, and it took a long time. It probably took like four months to do one book. <laughs> yeah. So I, I said this, I think, in my mid-year update. The, the Progeny Press Literature Guides could be its own language arts standalone curriculum, and I tried to pair it with IEW, and when you were doing the lit guides, you were not doing IEW, were you? No. No, because he did not have time to add in the IEW, so he got a late start with IEW until I cut out the lit guides. But because there was so much to write there, if your child is already understands how to write papers and maybe they are in that more dialectic stage where they, they want to debate and persuade, there were a lot of thought-provoking questions from the literature guide that they could take out and you could write papers on, right? Yeah. So maybe if you've, if you've already gone through an IEW or lost tools of writing and you're pretty solid in how to write papers, then you could just take these literature guides and use it as not only your reading, reading curriculum, but your writing curriculum. Okay, so IEW. We've done IEW from Classical Conversations, but you had really, really awesome tutor from Classical Conversations. How does Andrew Poudois compare to your mother? <laughs> In case you didn't know, I was a Classical Conversations Essentials tutor, so I taught him IEW. Give your honest opinion. What do you think? Because we used the theme-based writing in Classical Conversations, and this is having Andrew Poudoua do the videos, and you've had three years of IEW when you were in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. So having had three years previous experience, does it seem repetitive to you? Do you feel like it's taking too long, or do you think it's helpful to review all of it? One thing that's nice is that it has a weekly schedule, so it uh, divides all the work into five days, and so it'll tell you everything you need to do in those five days to get it done by the end of the week. Andrew's videos, the whole video is an hour, and it's split up in, into two parts. So two separate, doing, two separate days, you mean? Yeah, two okay. days, and you're doing work while the video is going. Oh, so like when the video's done, is your is your schoolwork f done for um, the day? For the first two days of the week. Because you're doing it together yeah. with the class. Okay. What do you think of the videos? Is he funny? Yeah, he has a lot of jokes. And the topics he has you write about are interesting as well. Now, do you think that the videos are too long for you, having had experience? Or do you, do you not mind it since you're working together? It's it's not bad because you're working while doing it. And so it's only like 40 minutes for the first two days okay. of work. 
So overall, you like the curriculum? Yeah. Okay. What about um, John Newton book in your assignment to create the presentation? You like that too? Do you like working in PowerPoint? Yeah, it's fun and easy. And it's kind of yeah, like it's cool at the end. How come? What do you mean cool? I don't know. Because like you get to do it your own way. Yeah. Oh, because you get to dabble with a technology and figure yes. out new ways to use it. You got a little creative side to you, even though you don't like to admit it. Okay, let's take a quick minute here and talk about the good and the beautiful, though, that you did last year because we never really did a review about that. And you actually liked the good and the beautiful language arts, didn't you? I liked them. They had a. I liked them because they have a lot of different topics that they teach, like art and geography and facts about countries and poems and writing and like everything you can think of see they'll teach you about in all the booklets you liked the variety yeah any did you like how every booklet was different yeah and you actually enjoyed some of the art projects what do you think was your favorite project that you did well you did the powerpoint presentation of the art school you did the pressed flower you did a map of New York City or something right oh it was Amsterdam I was so proud of him though for the press start project he went outside and grabbed flowers and I just thought my son's dabbling in art I loved it and he loves geography don't you mm -hmm. it's easy for you part of that's probably due to classical conversations don't you think Probably, yeah. I mean, you memorize the whole world <laughs> in seventh grade, how to draw it. I'm telling you, drawing the maps solidifies a lot more than you think, doesn't it, Drew? Yeah. Let's talk about history and Compass Classroom. And before we get into this, I do want to let you know they're running a sale, Compass Classroom, starting Memorial Day that whole week. Their entire website is 25% off. So if you are interested in Compass Classroom and you haven't purchased yet, you might want to think about it this week. 25% off is pretty good. And I will leave my link below. I would appreciate it if you use it so they know who sent you. Thank you. Tell us about history, both American and modernity. I did a review last year on American history, so I will link that below, but let's get his thoughts. This year he did modernity, which... What is modernity? When did it start? It really goes through modern, which he he didn't finish the uh, curriculum this year, but it was supposed to go through, like, I think even 9-11. I think we got through World War, World War II, and we might do more of that next semester or just watch the videos over the summer. But do you remember what time period it started? I remember it was super early. Like, I was surprised. Like 1500s? Probably 15 or 16. Okay. All right, so it's a pretty big time period to cover. But what do you think about the history, Dave Raymond's history in general? How long does it take you? Oh, modernity takes longer, doesn't it, than American history? Okay. How long did American history take you every day versus modernity? American history, the videos were usually like 10 minutes. And the assignments, the sections that you had to read, were usually like a page. But this year, the videos are 30 minutes, and the sections that you have to read are multiple pages. And there's been times where, like, I had to read Darwin's thing. <laughs> it was like 10 pages. <laughs> My son is not a reader. He doesn't really care for reading, right? If you're not interested in the topic. So, <laughs> all together, it would probably take like over an hour, a little bit over an hour. Yeah, that's a lot. And that's not counting the projects. So we really didn't do any of the projects this year because the history alone was taking so long. And then the Progeny Press was taking so long. Yeah, because you have the videos, the daily readings, you have to answer questions, 
and then you have your weekly exams and then you have your portfolio yeah which you did do the portfolio quarterly projects yeah so the quarterly projects we cut out but you did still do the portfolio because that's a good kind of like summary here's what he learned what do you think of dave raymond's videos do you like them even the half hour ones the videos are good they're always interesting and he he gets straight to the point he doesn't like ramble on or anything so there's a lot of facts and stuff that you write down and he does a good job tying it to the christian worldview don't you think in every single video so was there one particular lesson this year from modernity that stuck with you the industrial when we learned about the industrial revolution i remember um, how they were talking about making young children like under 10 years old work like 15 hours a day or more Mm -hmm. and it was just crazy yeah because you just can't imagine your little sister working in a factory (laughs) yeah to make you appreciate the world you live in now (laughs) for a little bit of a closer look at compass classrooms website check out Drew's day in the life where I followed him around and I showed a lot about the compass classroom and how it works in this video that I'm not going to show you here so I will link it below okay let's move on to science so first let's talk about Shorman science last year we did Shorman since we did Shorman math we did Shorman science and we I bought this huge experiment box from nature's workshop which i visited last year in indiana i will link that video below so you could see them and i also will link their website below because if you do a science curriculum where you want to do the experiments they usually for every curriculum including like an apologia um, brian builders if they come with experiments usually nature's workshop already has everything you need for that bundled together so you can just order everything that you need you don't have to piece together all of that they've already done it for you and you can order that bundle and they will ship it to you so they will be linked below shorman science we did what was it called physical science and chemistry right whatever their first science is because he hadn't had algebra one yet so he couldn't do biology because that that's a prerequisite for shorman's biology course was it hard because it was kind of all online now shorman does shorman science they do if you want a physical book they do have lesson plans where you can for example buy an apologia science book and shorman will tell you here's the pages in the apologia book where you can read if you don't want to read everything online but they have all the reading material online and links to websites right they have all the links to everything that you need to do on the website so it's all laid out and organized the reading wasn't long it was very interesting though the assignments that they had you do uh to answer questions it was base. it was a lot of math there's a lot of formulas that you have to memorize and use when you're answering the questions which i didn't like <laughs> If you don't like math, you might not like Shorman science anyway. What about like um, Quizlet? Because I know your Latin uses Quizlet, right? Did Shorman also use Quizlet to help you study your flashcards and stuff? Yeah, they have all the terms and definitions on there set up. You just click the link. Did you end up doing all the experiments? Because the other thing about Shorman is you don't have to do the experiments because his video course shows you the experiments which could be your lab just watching it but i thought that we would do them together with my daughters but that didn't end up happening so you did some of the experiments on your own did you end up ditching them in the end and just watching them yeah all right let's move on to meteorology you chose this science this year because i wanted you to have something that you were Um, particularly interested in and you and I like watching weather stuff don't we yeah 
I was looking for a meteorology course, as you know, and I ran across two. And this one I thought looked more interesting, but I'm not sure it ended up being exactly what I thought. So actually, this would be a good one, Drew, where we should go down and show them how the website works. So layeredearth.com, did you like the course or did it leave you wanting more? It taught you everything that I think you needed to know. It taught like hurricanes, tornadoes, wind, air, jet streams in the water, and layers of the atmosphere, mm -hmm. basically everything. And the homework was pretty easy, right? Yeah, it just taught you the facts. But it wasn't really a simulation like I thought it would be a simulation where you would get to forecast weather. It never really did that, did it? No, it just showed you, it just took you to the places on the earth to give you an example of something and then it gave you stats. Yeah, that was the disappointing part. Bye. Okay, Drew, so let's show them this science curriculum. So once you get logged in to layeredearth.com, looks like they have all kinds of different curriculums here. But you are doing the meteorology course. So launch the app, and then this is what it looks like. So tell us what we're looking at here, Drew. What is it here that you use? Student lessons. What are the student lessons? These are all the units. Atmosphere, energy balance, atmospheric circulation, weather, climate, climate change, human activities, and climate change. These top three links are what you do before the unit starts. This is like one day of work. This is what I had all these things are what I printed out, but it's all online, so he just read them all online. So, it, this section asks you some questions just to see what you know before the unit starts. Okay. And then, this is a article, I guess. American author of children's books, best known as the author of The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. Because this unit is about tornadoes, and there's a tornado in The Wizard of Oz, so that's cool. And it's kind of showing you down here, Dorothy's starting point began her journey to the land of Oz. So you read this article thing, and then it has questions at the bottom. And then you start the unit. So D1 is one week. All these are D1, D2, D3, and D4 are each individual weeks. So this unit would take about four weeks to get through. Okay. Go do the extreme weather one. So then this is your daily stuff, okay. lesson one of D4. You click on it and then it gives you some facts, some charts, um, let's try this mean. So when it teaches you about stuff, you can often just click, like, hold on. Oh, it shows you over here. So this August 23rd is where it was, where Katrina was, and then you go August 30th, and it'll show you where it was on August 30th, which is in the U.S. And then it shows you the stages of the hurricane. So depression, tropical storm, hurricane one, two, three, five, down to three, and then it goes to depression That's what in it one week. Yeah. Ooh, play animation. So. That's of Katrina. Hmm. 
This is New Orleans. Bunch of information. Okay, so then you learn about tornadoes. Then you go to tornadoes, facts, pictures, examples. Click here to see a map of tornado tracks. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. 1950 to 2011. That's interesting. Look how red that is. So that means they got that. A lot of tornadoes. Huh. Look at Texas. I mean, Texas is a big state. That's why it gets so many. But relatively speaking, it's more sparse, isn't it? So it looks like Mississippi and the Oklahoma. Tons, yeah have the darkest red spots. Go down, click here to see data showing average annual number of tornadoes per state. Yeah. Yeah. Per, per um, 10,000 square miles. So is red the worst? So Kansas is the worst. And then Mississippi. Wow. And then South Carolina, Illinois, and Iowa. That's crazy. Because you usually think of Oklahoma and Texas, but they and probably West have. Virginia, it's less than one. Yeah. That's because of the mountains. So Oklahoma and Texas probably have more intense tornadoes, though. Because, like, Illinois is red there, but our tornadoes are usually. Not deadly, usually. We, we've had recently in the past 10 years a uh, F4, right, Drew? We remember that day clearly, right? Dad got the warning and he just kept driving. <laughs> oh, it was horrific and that wasn't even like the F4 tornado that was near us, but that day Illinois had a ridiculous amount. And then, let's see. At the end of every week, there's a quiz. There's a quiz lesson summary. So here's some bullet points, what you learned over the week, some vocabulary. And then you have review questions for the unit. Mm -hmm. I mean, for the week. I forget, you checked these yourself too, so it has answers on here for you to check your own work? Is yeah. that right? On all of them. Oh yeah, view answers. So then at the bottom of this, the unit D section, you have a unit. Yeah, that this is the same questions that I asked before. I don't know now. So you can see what you learned from what you knew before. Mm-hmm. Everything you need is on screen. Oh, okay. So what do you do here? Official storm forecast from National Weather Service. Impossible to read. So that's where what it said Katrina was going to be? Is that right? Yep. This is the forecast and this is the actual location. Hmm. I don't know what that is. So that's where it made landfall. This is the actual path. Mm -hmm. The red is the actual path and the black line is the forecast. That's pretty much it. So no simulation, just using the map to show you the tracks. So a little bit different than what we had originally thought. So, all right, thanks, Joe. But, so his science actually ended a little early this year and I found through one of my homeschool Facebook groups that the National Weather Service, I think from Nashville, was holding free classes online. And I signed you up for one and so it was kind of like a Zoom call, wasn't it? Was yeah. it a Zoom call? 
What was the, I forget what the topic of the class was. Do you remember? It was weather radars. And what did you think of that class? Because they had, I'm only bringing it up because they had tons of them that you could sign up throughout the year and throughout the summer. You could, if you want to learn about hurricanes, they would teach you about how they forecast and the models that they use and all that. So it would be a good supplement to this course if you wanted to do meteorology because I didn't think this course um, took that long. Of course, I did cut out some of the stuff at the end that I thought was a little bit more political. And we opted for the National Weather Service instead. So what did you think of that class? It was interesting. The guy uh, had a PowerPoint that he shared, and he taught you some of the things about how radars work and the coverage that they go out to and some of the mathematical calculations that they have to do because when the radars send out signals, you have to account for the curvature in the Earth. And then after he taught you some of the stuff, there was polls that you could participate in. So it was also interactive. Oh, that's cool. And then they also had questions at the end. We need to sign you up for a tornado one. We need to know about tornadoes. Okay, Latin, Compass Classroom, Latin. You grade your own homework because I can't read Latin. I've told my audience that before. I didn't realize I was grading his quizzes, and then I didn't realize if you have the streaming for the Latin online through the Compass Classroom online that he was taking the quiz online and it does grade it for you, right? Yeah, but then, it doesn't keep the grades. Yeah, it doesn't keep the grades, so I still have to write the grade down. What do you think of, what's his name, Dwayne? Thomas. Dwayne Thomas. I think, I don't know. What do you think of Dwayne? He's also very funny. The videos are nice and short. They're like seven minutes, usually. And then everything's laid out. And uh, on Compass Classroom website for all the courses online, you can mark things complete when you're done so that you can visualize what you've completed and what you haven't. Mm -hmm. So you know what you're doing next. What do you think of Latin? Have you noticed any benefits from learning Latin? The vocabulary is a lot easier than I thought. Because a lot of the words are basically English. Yeah, a lot of our words are derived from Latin words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the I'm sure there's... A lot of Latin words that are directly translated to other languages besides English. Yeah, because Latin's a Romantic language, so it's pretty close to Spanish and French and Italian are Romantic languages, so they have a lot in common. So learning other languages, if you wanted to learn in Spanish, for example, it would probably be a lot easier for you to learn Spanish than for me because you already have this foundation in Latin. But you've been doing Latin four years. <laughs> so don't think that Latin is an easy language to learn. Do you think it's an easy language to learn? No, I don't think so either. And that, so I just want to give you fair warning. When he was started this in seventh grade, it was okay. Probably the first seven or eight weeks until you got yep. to verbs, right? Yep. And then it got really hard. And you had to work really hard, didn't you? In fact, he repeated, so he did Latin through Henley, Latin through Classical Conversations, and then in eighth grade, we did Latin one through Compass Classroom. So he repeated stuff, which is the classical model. And then his freshman year, he did Latin one again, didn't you? Yeah. So he got a solid foundation of repetition. So he was able to do Latin too. But if you want to learn Latin, Compass Classroom, Probably one of the best ways to do it. Also, if you're in classical conversations even, it does show you how this translates to a Henley lesson plan. Do you have any tips for learning Latin? Anything that's helped you? Or do you just have to memorize, uh, memorize, memorize? Make sure you memorize the charts for all the endings and tenses and stuff like that. Yeah, so I also... very important. 
Don't you think also to know Latin, you really have to understand things like sentence structure? Like you have to know direct objects. It depends on your teacher. Gerunds. I mean, Dwayne teaches you that, but if you already know that from English grammar, it will probably make learning Latin easier because sentence structure plays a huge part in translating, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. Dave Ramsey's finance. Have you learned anything from Dave Ramsey's finance? Has Dave taught you to never take a loan on anything? If it's possible, I mean, sometimes we think Dave might be a little unrealistic, but we'll see. I would definitely say no credit card debt. If you could yeah. pay cash for a car, do that. What do you think? Videos are pretty short. During the video, you have keywords to write down in the book. And then after every unit or chapter, there's info basically just going over what you learned over the chapter in the last couple weeks. Oh yeah, there's the case things. Mm -hmm. Case studies. So during the chapter you also have other worksheets outside the book, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can. You don't have to do them. But through the teacher's download, they give you that option. I watched a lot of the videos with them. I thought they were very well done. They, It's not like just sitting there listening to somebody lecture it's it's like watching Dave in his seminar and then inside a classroom and then like an infographic stuff so it's constantly moving and teaching I I feel like I I learned a lot and I wish that I would have learned that stuff when I was your age there's a lot of stories yeah what about that finance course you did last year for your co-op how is that different than Dave Ramsey's it was a bunch of basics, budgeting and investing. But Dave has b more beyond that, more so, in-depth stuff. But the one that you did for the co-op, it's a good starter, and it's also a lot less expensive than Dave Ramsey's course. So I think that book was probably only $25, whereas Dave Ramsey's is probably closer to 100 So there's that. All right, and then the rest of the stuff that he did was our family Bible study. You like your family time? Yep, especially when we play games. I knew, I knew you were going to say that. If I say, Drew, you want to play a game? He hustles right upstairs. <laughs> you like playing the games. That's why we do it. And spending time in, when family Bible study together with your sisters is special for them too. So we will always do that. Yep, next year it'll be a little lighter load so we could make sure he has time to work. Trying to redo. redo stuff and whittle down what your interests are. I really wish you would help me set up a website. <laughs> Trying to talk him into that. Well, thanks, guys. If you have questions, leave them below. More information about high school, check out this playlist right here for all of our high school videos. High school curriculum playlist up here. Until next time, bye.